Are you fluent in Spanish? I am. Por supuesto que sí. El volcán de Parangaracutrimícuaro. I'm a keke lakapot and tomato la patita. Tú sabes, potato y carapilar. Pito arroba de ajá para que te matara. ¿Qué más es? Carapela matito mata a matito para partos. El volcán de Parangaracutrimícuaro se dice Parangaracutrimícuaro. El que lo puede es Parangaracutrimícuaro. Será un gran. Oh, mi toco lindo. Me dice algo bonitita. 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 I agree. You're riding down the Harlan Highway. All right, I think we're, I think we're ready to rock and roll. Yeah. Are you Are you ready? Do you feel ready? Yeah, I, I feel ready. It. Okay. Um, I guess I should tell them where we are. Yeah, that'd we're, be a great start. We're on the Harlan Highway podcast. Yeah. Uh, the I I usually say it in Cajun too. <laughs> Do you speak Cajun? A little bit from time to time. Okay, so let me do the theme music. Yeah. Here we go. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, mm-hmm. well, now that's right. You're on the Holler Highway podcast, right, chow? Right, chow? And um, what a show we got today. Brenda's here. Uh, Brenda, say hello to everybody. Hello, everybody. Oh. <laughs> Where do I look? Oh, your camera's over here. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, everybody. But you know what? There is a camera here and here. Mm-hmm. So I'm not going to... Who am I to tell a modern-day woman where to look? Hello, everybody. Hey, buddy. <laughs> wow, did you just get whiplash, perhaps? Just a little uh, bit. So I'm used to it. You were like, hello. Like a, <laughs> almost like a pigeon, like... <laughs> Um, now I'm not going to butcher your, your, you're one of those beautiful people like Sarah Jessica Parker, you go by three names <laughs> and I don't want to butcher it cause I'm not good with like long names, yeah. Brenda and then Sarai Zuniga. Oh, see there's folks, it's can okay. you, can you blame me? I can't blame you. No, I can't blame Arlo. Wow. Yeah. You just did a fourth camera. I, you did one I, that isn't there. I did. You went like this, you went I can't blame <laughs> Harlem. It was like, you made up your own camera. That's how good you are. I just thought I saw an invisible one, and I was wow. like, Harlan's trying to surprise me. I'm not going to let him. You know how to podcast, girl. No one in all the history of the Holland Highway guests, Dang. no one has thrown to a, a camera that isn't there. Well, it's there. It is the Oh, that one? It's right here. Holy God. It's And then it's gone. Wow, you are good. It was mine. Brenda got game. Brenda come into the into the studio with game here on the Hall Hall and Punk. Um, well, how are you doing? Welcome to the uh, to the pod. It's so good to see you. So good to see you. Yeah, thank you, you. Thank you for having me. Oh, are you kidding? You look dynamite. Have you ever had that term before? <laughs> dynamite. Not said like that. No. I, no, I've heard someone say you look dynamite. And like, oh, really? Like a yeah. whisper? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that had to be like at a weird, creepy pickup joint or something? Yeah. And I was like, what did oh, you yeah. just say to me? And he's like, yeah. dynamite. I'm like, yeah. my name is Brenda. Yeah. My name is Brenda. Yeah. And then he was like, dynamite. So my was- name is Brenda, but you can call me nitroglycerin or TNT. <laughs> Whatever you want. It all ends up with a bang. Too soon, too soon, right away. Inappropriate, right away. Um, but wait. But it was so great to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Everybody. Yeah, yeah, it's all hard. Thank you, goodbye. Let's hit the theme music. Uh, but wait, why was this guy's voice so husky and wit? Like, he's like, you look dynamite. I think like, he had, um, I think he had, like, vocal cord damage. Wait, you got hit on by a guy with a tracheotomy? Yeah, it was. Wow. It, yeah, it's. I know. You look dynamite. No, yeah. Like, you look You're dynamite. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah. Sometimes I wonder. This may sound mean. Yeah. Why does a guy with a tracheotomy yeah. need to hit on women and look for gratification when just like three inches below his chin, there's a glory hole? You know what? He was someone who believed in himself so much. <laughs> you just got that. You got that. I mean, take some yoga classes. Take some Pilates. 
bend over backwards and you're you're riding all night <coughs> Drink yeah, I think he's. Are you all right? I'm fantastic. God, you're dynamite. You're not fantastic. You're dynamite. Was it creepy? Was he in a library? Like, why was he whispering? Were you in church? We were at a park, and I was running, and and that's why I stopped because I was like, "What?" And he was like, "And I'm like, why?" Oh, he flagged you down yeah. to give you a compliment. Yeah, and he's like, "What you're dynamite?" Oh, like, and he whispered it. I'm like trying to maintain my, I was like, listen, yeah. I don't have time for, what? What is it? He's like, you're dynamite. I'm like, oh, Brenda. My name is Brenda, not Diana. I thought he was saying Diana at first. Oh, Diana. Yeah. But he was saying dynamite. Yeah, or maybe he was saying Diana. And maybe now I'm a jerk because I'm making fun of him now. No, no. I'm well, not making fun of him. No. I'm empowering him. Yeah, what were you wearing? Yeah. Were you wearing anything red? Like, uh, did he, was the, did oh, the. Oh, maybe I triggered something. Where like, he was you, like, if you're in a red tracksuit, maybe oh. he's like, oh, you look like dynamite. You know, like a stick of TNT. Yeah, totally. I'm just trying to. Totally. Figure oh it out. I think that's what it was. You were wearing red. I was dressed as a stick of dynamite. Oh, so it was on Halloween. Yeah. Oh, wow. How did you know? Were you there too? You were there. You were I, in the I was bush. the guy. You were. I was the you guy. You were the guy. I was dressed as an old man. Yeah, that was my Halloween. Co- Recognize this voice? You look like dynamite. Oh my God! Hi. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Oh Hi. my hey, God! It come was on so over. Long. Yeah. Hey. You How like are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. It's so good to yeah. see you Thank again. Thank you. Yeah. It's nice to see you. That park was fun, wow, wasn't it? Wow. That was weird. That was right next to the prison. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are yeah. there parks beside prisons? Um. I mean, this park was. Yeah. You were dressed all in orange. <laughs> I was in, yeah, the I do orange. I remember that. Yeah, the orange jumpsuit. But it was Halloween. Yeah. So. Yeah, I guess on I Halloween, mean, you can't really decipher who's. Because no. a lot of people for Halloween will dress up as bad people. Right. Like, even to the point where some will dress up like Freddy Krueger and Jason right. the 13th. and But yeah. some people dress up as Ted Bundy. Some people dress up uh. as a jailbird. So, yeah, I guess Halloween's the day where you could get away with... Hitting on a girl. Lurking in a park and... You look like dynamite. A, just the way you did, Harlan. Oh, my yeah. God. I yeah. can't believe that was you. Just the way you. I did. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You know, this is awkward. We all got to grow. Well, we all gotta grow. how's your... Um, Trach? Yeah. You know, I like to, I'm a swimmer, so yeah. I like to refer to it as a blowhole. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, Dolphin. I, well, yeah, and I won the backstroke in the 76 Olympics. Was, that was because like a I thousand years ago, right? Yeah, and I didn't have to yeah. breathe. Like, I, all the other swimmers had to, like, <gasps> go under. Yeah. Breathe. I just went on my back, and I was just like. Just That's wild. Just breathing away. That's won wild. gold, like, 18 times. I think I even... I even won one gold in track and field, even though I was a swimmer. I just never got out of breath. <laughs> That's cheating. Yeah. Well, you know, if you're going to make fun of a dolphin, maybe this isn't the podcast for you. <laughs> <laughs> I love dolphins. I'm a big why? fan of dolphins. Why do you love them? I'm curious because I, I think I love them too, but why yeah. do you, what's, what's your affinity for dolphins? They're so smart. They're, well, they're so smart. Like, I mean, I'm dressed as one right now. I'm wearing blue. This oh, yeah. This is why I'm dressed as a dolphin. Oh, because you love dolphins so much. Yeah. You and know, my it, hair, it's wavy like the waves. Oh, your hair is stunning. Like, oh, it's great. God. Like, it's just, like, I'm, an, I'm going to sound like like a, an effeminate hairdresser right now. Yeah. I don't even know where this is coming from, but the volume to your hair. Oh, thank you. The volume, the light, the texture. Thank you. I mean, it's just fabulous. Thank you. Your hair is fabulous. Well, these like, are plugs. Oh. Yeah, the, hair plugs. Ooh, okay. Uh, plugs are fabulous. Yeah. I got them from uh, choir boys from uh, Finland. Mm. Got these imported. Yeah. Mm. Very sharp. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. No, I don't have plugs, but people say I've got good hair. You have great hair. Which I, I'm, I'm kind of happy about, you know? I'm, I'm like, you got two ways to go as a guy, bald or your hair stays in. So far, my hair's staying in. Yeah. But I think you're diverting away from your beautiful crop. <laughs> like, you, uh, you definitely have, there's hair and then there's hair. Like, I would use your hair as like a sleeping bag, like if I was lost in the woods. If we were hiking, I would just wrap your hair around me to keep me warm. 
I would use your hair as a mm. carpet in a, in a, if we were in a cabin and there was a bear skin rug, I'd roll up the bear, throw it outside, lay your hair out. I mean, just it's silky soft. It, it makes sense why you changed your voice that day. Yeah. <laughs> And you were not dressed in a costume, Harlan. It's me. This is creepy. <laughs> you want to go for a swim? No. <laughs> but you know what bugs me about dolphins? Because one of the first things you said is they're smart, they're right? They're so smart. And that's what they say. They say next, not chimps, not gorillas, not monkeys, not pigs. Next to humans, they go, dolphins are the second smartest entity on the planet. Yeah. Living creature. Yeah. And I go, okay, I go to SeaWorld and I bring my taxes. You'd think something <laughs> You'd think something that's like second to humans could at least do my basic taxes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Couldn't even do two plus two, the dumb fuck. You know what? You are judging the dolphin on what it doesn't want to do, Harland. Oh, wait. Yeah. So he you're oh, I'm judging it on land stuff. I'm his lawyer. And I'm standing up for this dolphin because you right now are, this is a defamation case. Whoa. This is libel on that Whoa. beautiful dolphin. His name was, that was its name. Oh my God. I knew his sister. Yeah, you did. Yeah. And you still have the audacity to speak ill of my client. Wow. I am now a British lawyer. You're a British lawyer, uh, a yeah. British dolphin lawyer. And how dare you? Benjamin oh my Franklin goodness. Right. Or, or Albert Einstein. Albert? Or Newton. Uh, shoot, don't f I, I forgot who said this. You've also forgot your accent. I did. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> yes, I'm listening. If you judge right. a fish by the... Um, oh. By its ability... Right. To climb up the wall, right? You are diminishing that fish's uh, intelligence, right? So that's what I'm trying to say about my client. Well, I think you've just lost <laughs> your client's case right away because oh. you labelled your client a fish, wherein dolphins are mammals. Love, mm. so I'm afraid you're fired. Objection. I'm calling Larry H. Parker. You're PSA. done. PSA. Objection. PSM? PSA. PSA what? Hearsay. Oh, hearsay. I don't even know what that means, but hearsay and I object. Wow, it's just a legal term. You knew hearsay. <laughs> hearsay is evidence or, or, or uh, yeah, I think it's evidence that has no proof. Okay. It's, it's hearsay. It's like conjecture. It's like, oh, it's, it's something <laughs> someone said, but there's nothing to back it up. So it's not concrete evidence. It's it's considered hearsay. It's like ambiguous. See, and that's <clears throat> that's what you think the definition is. The real definition is you uh, heard me say that I'm representing a dolphin. Are you becoming British which again? Which is close to a fish. And that's why it's hearsay. Because you heard me say dolphin, but now you hit... Wait a minute. How smart can a dolphin be if they're the second smartest... They're mammals, and they live in the water. Show. Okay, they live in the water, and they breathe air. That, to me, is a dumbass. <laughs> hey, stupid, you're an air breather. Get up here. We got a lawn chair for you and some Hawaiian punch. Let's go, anus forehead. <laughs> do they shit out of their heads? How do we know it's a blowhole? Maybe that's their asshole. Objection, you are now. <laughs> She's British again. Here we go. <laughs> you drift in and out of British more than Prince Harry at an orgy. Wait, what does that mean? I'm not trying to be counseled on this podcast, Holland. <laughs> Holland? I'm not trying. To Suddenly I'm Holland, the country of Holland. I'm not trying to be counseled on this I'm podcast, not Holland. I'm trying to be counseled <laughs> right now. No. Now you're Australian now. Man, you are like the IHOP of accents <laughs> over there. Oh, no. Oh, no. Actually, you know, speaking of oh, IHOP yeah. and American diners, I used to work at Denny's. No way. Yeah, true story. I was a, a Denny's oh. graveyard server when I was 19 wow. years old. True story. I knew a girl who was a waitress at IHOP, and she only had one leg. And I used to ask her, how do you get to work? And she said, I hop. Yeah, she was a trader. She worked at our enemies. I think you uh, missed it. Yeah, I did. I said I, I hop. No, I heard it. I just pretended I didn't. 
<laughs> Wait, you worked at a Denny's? <laughs> yes. What? Well, come on. Yeah, I was 19. Why weren't you at Hooters like all the other gorgeous girls? I object. Um, oh, God, I've done it. I've gone stepped in it again. I've, I object. You've been objectified. I immediately yeah. said you should have been at Hooters because you you're go. pretty. Yeah. You caught yourself, Holland. I caught myself. Yeah, you're right. You belong at Denny's. Mm-hmm. <laughs> why, why were you... Why did you get a job at Denny's? <clears throat> um, because I didn't want to objectify myself. That yeah. Way. You know, I wanted to prove that I could... Just be a blue collar, <clears throat> hardcore, working with the, the elbow grease. Blue and collar. Yeah. I don't have a collar right now, but if I did, Dead. it would be blue. Because blue. it would match your d- blue dress. Exactly. Wait, so how, how long did you work at Denny's? I was there for about two years. That long? Yeah. I started as a hostess, a morning hostess. Oh, wow. They're the best hostesses of all, the morning ones. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. The later the day goes on at Denny's, the little grislier it becomes. And you know, we still had to say good morning, even if it was like 5 p.m. and I was there. No way. Yeah, we'd be like, good morning. And everyone would look at us like, you're, you're crazy. So you go in at 5 in the afternoon and it, <laughs> you're standing there going, good morning. Good morning. Yeah. And I, isn't that just a way for corporate Denny's, team corporate Denny's, to trick the employees so that they work a really long shift? Just Probably. tell them it's morning all day. They won't know. We'll Probably. squeeze extra hours out of them. Probably. I mean, I remember I remember going in in the morning, and then I would have a gra- uh, graveyard shift at night. And so I what? would come in like around 9 p.m., leave around 4 a.m., and then sometimes it'd be like 12 a.m. to 7 a.m. Then I'd get like a big cup of coffee yeah. at the end and then drive to school. And so like... Wait, how old were you? Uh, at this time, I was 19. So be yeah. honest. Because yeah. you're obviously a very beautiful girl. Did you, you know, you get a lot of sort of blue collar truck driver types. I love Denny's. I used to go yeah. all the time. I'd play hockey. We'd go to Denny's after. I, lo- I love like mostly for their breakfast. I'm not big on the other food they have there, but yeah. bacon and eggs. Was was there a lot of like sort of like, uh, you know, were there people making comments? Were there people like, you know, hitting oh, on yeah. you a lot at the thing? Yeah, it, it happened a lot. I mean, dude, I, there was a lot of people that would dine and dash, you know. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I would serve 10, 10 top tables. They'd come in, they'd order. 10 people? Yeah, 10 people. And then they would just dip. All 10 of them? <laughs> yeah, they would just run. One time I ran after a table. I was like, no, you're not. And I just went running what? after them. Yeah, I was... Because, yeah, I was going to say, if it's just one person, you, you can eat at Denny's, you can stuff your face for like three ninety nine, yeah. and you're going to be like, okay, but 10 people, that's at least twenty ninety nine. You know, minimum. I mean, you got to chase that. Minimum, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. And did you catch them? I remember not this particular table. I mean, uh, how far could they to. run if they're at Denny's? They got to be fatties. They were running pretty far. <laughs> they got to be. Most of the Denny's eaters are the fatties. Oh, we would get some really uh, fit nightclubbers, though, at 2 in the morning. We'd get the 2 a.m. rush. What do you mean fit? Like, they, they were dancing all night. So oh, they so were they were ripped. ripped. Yeah. yeah. And then they'd come in and oh, cause wow. chaos. Really, the ravers? Yeah. Not the ravers, but the, the club that was right around us. I worked at the... Wilshire and Western location. And there was a club right now. Wow. This was over a decade ago. Yeah. Just kidding. It was two years ago. I'm not trying to age myself. <laughs> Hollywood, I am 21 right now. We're going to have Hollywood. to edit that one yeah. out. Yeah. Too um, late. Too late. You busted, love. So <laughs> <laughs> Objection. PSA. You just heard me say it, and I take it back. Um, no, so I remember the club rush. Yeah, uh, would come in and they would cause chaos. They'd get on top of the tables. They'd be really just swinging their eggs and hash rounds in the air. No, no joke. Like it was mad. They were swinging their eggs in the air. That's gotta hurt when you rip out your own fallopian tube. <laughs> <laughs> just like, yeah. Anyone got some sperms? Full moon over my granny. <clears throat> wow. I am not going to get canceled on this podcast. Too late. We were canceled about <laughs> 10 minutes ago. I think when we were doing the uh, dolphin uh, <laughs> glory hole bit, we got canceled right there. 
So let's, before we keep going, let's tell people a bit about you. Yeah. Because you're so interesting because you, you know, we first met, you do stand-up comedy, mm-hmm. right? How long have you been doing comedy for? For about five years, five, yeah. six years maybe, yeah. But then, let me put my peepers on because you, your list is like, you do, I'm gonna, I want to go through these too sure. if you're cool with it. So sure. you do stand-up, which is amazing, but you're a mindfulness coach and a mental health health motivational speaker, mm-hmm. and then you also put down an ADHDR or whatever, right? <laughs> ADHDR, a- what's that? I, I don't even know what that means. Am I ADHD or is that? Yeah. Is that for people with, like, don't have attention span? Attention deficit. Yeah. Hyperactivity. Yeah. Wow. But before, I want, before we do, I want to know, because I don't know if everyone knows what a mindfulness <laughs> coach is. Are you, do you want to talk about that, or is that, like, boring or do you yeah are you kidding no it's amazing yeah I, i'm interested in that so but yeah. ex- i've heard of life coaches mm-hmm. but i haven't heard of a, like a mindfulness coach to mm-hmm. explain my practice it deals with oh hold on i need to do that again <coughs> are you getting emotional <laughs> oh Whoa. so Whoa. my practice yeah and what i do oh, is i really help a lot of people. Yeah. A lot of people. Might need to help yourself right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> yeah. No, what no, is it? Really. Um. So mindfulness coaching. What I do in my practice yeah. is I help people with meditation, how to establish um, oh. practices that are going to help them a lot with overcoming anxiety, depression, stress management, ADHD management. These are all tools that. I have used. These are all tools that I use every single day. Yeah. These are tools that I have heavily researched for over a decade, and I've studied neuroscience for over five, six years. Gosh, I can't even remember now. Wow. But, um, yeah, I went to school for psych. Um, oh, I've wow. I've been studying this for So you're a qualified decade. to do this stuff. Yeah, and I help a lot of people with overcoming anxiety and stress and um depression and again adhd management like learning the tools to help and calm your central nervous system yeah right so that we can be grounded in the present moment versus wherever the mind wants to take us which the mind can take us to catastrophizing things yeah or it can take us to the past but it's about being grounded in the in the present moment right 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 in the moment are you one of these people it's like don't dwell on the past don't anticipate the future just be present is that kind of yes and no like yes of course but also there's understanding as to why somebody would dwell in the past and why somebody would be uh anxiously anticipating the future and so we dive into the neuroscience behind the brain and then i help them rewire you know, oh wow! Uh, I That's them, pretty heavy. Yeah, I help them rewire unhealthy coping behaviors into positive new ones using the our brain's neuroplasticity, which is a fancy way of saying our brain can create positive new um, neurons and connections, so that we can create the life of our dreams. And I'm living proof of it. So. Wow! I want to get into that in a second, but yeah. first we need to dissect the term neuroplasticity. Yeah. Because I know what it means. Uh-huh. But these, the people watching, Donnie Licorice Lips and Betty Barnacle Bottom. Uh, there's Sarah Sunblast Face. Sarah and, Sunblast Face. Yeah. A huge and fan. There, yeah, and there's uh, Carol Captain Crunch Twat. Wow. Yeah, they're all wa- they all watch. I know what brain neuroplasticity means. Yeah. I, uh, duh, hello, look at me. But them... <laughs> If you can tell them what it means, they don't understand the big brain neuroplasticity things. Yeah. Hey, what's up, everybody? Yeah, tell them. Just Hi. and talk slowly, maybe to them, and like so what you. So the brain neuroplasticity do- is our brain's way to create new neurons and new and new behavior patterns that we can then shift into our desired reality by creating new behavior patterns that we can then meditate and then do breath work and then do gratitude and then do positive affirmations and these are all the things that help us really, really, really fulfill our life's mission. Was that slow enough? That was a little too slow. Sworn if, that was pretty slow. If you could go just one more time, but just slow it up even more than what you just did, like okay, 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 like okay. slow it. As sl- okay. Um. Our great, great. I think they got it. I think. Well, now you. Um. Uh-huh. Okay. So. 
No. Uh, wow, <laughs> you're like the bionic woman, just. So no, no, no. I'll just it's a say. big word. It's yeah. I don't know if I, to be honest, I don't know if I've ever heard neuro brain neuroplasticity. Yeah. Is that for real? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and all. It sounds say. like 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 it sounds like a super villain in like like a like. Aquaman c- comic or something. That would be so fun, like, by the way. Brain neuroplasticity man. But what is it? Like, like it's, it's a very fancy word. It's basically, it's a fancy word to say um, our brain has the capacity to rewire itself and to build and create new neurons to build new connections in our brain so that we can rewire our unhealthy coping skills and create positive new ones that are going to serve us in this current phase in life that we are in. Because a lot of us have unhealthy coping skills that we... Give an example of an unhealthy coping skill for them. I know what they are, but they don't. Absolutely. And an example would be... um, heavy drinking okay you know al- like alcoholism but yeah. there's there's a reason why that was that was where developed. it came from yes exactly but wait a minute before we dip into that when you say you, your neurons get destroyed can your neurons be destroyed by drinking and your brain cells can be destroyed. your brain cells yeah. are destroyed by drinking and yeah. smoking pot and all that stuff well i don't i don't i don't want to get too into the like <clears throat> let me rephrase that hold on well i don't know about the whole smoking pot like i don't I haven't researched that okay okay so i can't say but, that for sure but, but i drinking can for does sure yeah. say that alcohol does kills brain cells yes and do those brain cells ever regenerate or are they just gone are they just history you can definitely create new neurons in the brain okay but if somebody is a heavy drinker and is you know, yeah. leaning more towards the alcoholism route, then it's, I mean, there's damage there, right? But again, I want to speak on what I do know. And I yeah. do know that these behaviors, they stem from coping, right? Like they, they stem from trying to cope with something, trying to yeah. cope with stress or trying to cope with anxiety or depression, Okay, you know, or even ADHD. Addiction is also, it's a gene, you know, it's, it's a gene. It, you, it's addiction is. It, it can be passed on through. It can be passed on, but it doesn't mean that you have to become that, fulfill yeah, that legacy. Exactly. Yeah, like you are in control of yeah. your own life. Yeah, I've heard that many know? alcoholics. There, it's a gene you can pass on the alcoholism mm-hmm. gene, and for mm-hmm. some reason, I remember hearing it's it's prevalent in in um, in in women in in like the the girls the girls objection sibling. yeah objection oh, yes that's hearsay because yeah. i don't know where that information came from yeah i heard it's coming somewhere in my foggy memory from a long time mm-hmm. ago mm. maybe rem- the female dolphins that you used to <laughs> maybe maybe but i remember i remember hearing that it popped up in and the reason i remember is because back in college i dated a girl who I was nuts about and her father was an alcoholic mm. and being sort of a young kid in my, you know, my late teens, early twenties, I heard that. And so now that became a factor in, Oh, do I want to go down the road mm. where I had heard some research from somewhere? I can't remember when this is a while back where they said more often than not, the, the alcoholism gene becomes prevalent in the daughters more than the sons. Now, I don't know if it's true, but it's something I heard back then. Yeah. And it kind of made me, put me on guard like, ooh, do I, do I want to keep going down the road with this girl? I mean, it yeah. wasn't the only factor, but it was something I never thought about, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I haven't read that. I haven't yeah, heard It could that. be totally wrong, but remember, yeah. this is something I heard way back when, so I don't want to put that on you. But and, Yeah, uh, and I can speak from experience. Yeah. My grandparents, they... Um, both male grandparents were yeah. heavy alcoholics. Oh, wow. But I, I mean, I didn't develop, my dad didn't develop that gene. Oh, good. You know, I yeah. didn't develop that gene. You never, you never into the sauce? Or I shouldn't even say develop that gene. I don't know if that's the right terminology to use, but I. Inherit that inherit, gene. There yeah. you go. Yeah. I mean, I didn't. Yeah. So. Oh, good. Did, did you ever hit the sauce? Did you drink at all? Like just, you know. 
Yeah, of course. Like, you know, just... Yeah, like but socially. Socially, yeah, yeah. once in a while. But I've never been a drink. I've never been a yeah. big drinker. Like good, that's good, never good. been my thing. I don't like how yeah. I feel on it personally. Like it's just Yeah, 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 of course. You know? Yeah. But again, no. the the reason why I even brought that up with yeah. with alcoholism is because these are all coping skills. These are all un, un unhealthy coping skills that yeah. are just masking, you know, a deeper rooted thing that someone's trying to soothe it's, right. it's a soothing it's an unhealthy soothing mechanism like coping mechanism. do you know what i'm saying yeah yeah i know what you're saying yeah. yeah and so i help people get down to the root of why like where their anxiety is stemming from and then we help we help like and did you create your your own technique your own mm-hmm. kind of your, your your own method of doing it you just mm-hmm. kind of carved it out of trial and error and research and put together your own thing that you can sort of apply on mass to whoever comes in it it's something you found that works with the average person yes oh and that's pretty cool thank you and that i must have taken a lot of work though to do that right <laughs> yeah. like years and years years and yeah. years and years and I, I have over a decade of um coursework and, and wow. school work and you know experience with it as well with my own ways of developing it and studying it, heavy study. And are you constantly evolving it? Is it it keeps, it keeps changing and you're yeah. finding new add-ons? And, oh, that's pretty yeah. incredible. That's some heady stuff. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. And, and it's got to be rewarding because so rewarding. obviously you're helping people where a lot of this stuff is addictions and trauma and, and deep, you know, whatever's going on inside psychologically. So mm-hmm. people come to you and it is it like a is it like sort of like a psych where you you kind of work with you until you feel there's resolution or is it like six weeks and you're out or like how do you operate with you kind of like would you stick with someone for four years if like donnie had all these issues and you you felt you were getting progress but it took four years to break through Mm -hmm. or you like hey i do a six-week thing and then off you go on your own well, great question. Because thank you. It, yeah. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> great question from Arlen. <laughs> thank you. Um, <laughs> now I'm exhausted. I need a nap. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> on the podcast, Harlan? On the podcast? <laughs> on the podcast. Um, but your answer? <laughs> My answer is, yeah. uh, well, here's the thing. It depends on... Right what they come to me for, but absolutely. I always remind everyone, hey, this isn't an overnight thing. It's you an know, open this door. is this is gonna be yeah, this is gonna be a long term journey. And sometimes it can be a lot quicker than you think. Yeah. You know, and sometimes it may take a little longer than you think. And that's okay because we are rewiring. We are we are rewiring things. We yeah. are learning to soothe in different ways. We are developing the the necessary skills in order for us to build that resiliency that um, empowerment from within, wow. you know, versus just a quick fix. Oh, here's a, here's a two week thing, and then you're all set. No, it. This is this is psyche. What tends to be the sort of wheelhouse duration of your sessions with people? Like, does it tend to be around three, four weeks, or is it longer, or is it days? Is it hours? So my clients, I see them for one hour. Like every session that we have is an hour session. On a and Zoom or in person? Via Zoom. Okay. And then sometimes um, I do weekly, bi-weekly. And oh, then I wow. can see them like once every three weeks, one, once a month. I have clients where I see once a month. Yeah. Um, and, and it depends. Like I have clients right now who I've been seeing for about three years. I have wow. another client who I've been seeing for two I have a few clients that I've been seeing for about a year. And then I have a client who in less than a year was able to help overcome her anxiety, her social anxiety and her depression through our work together. And then now she's on her way and I'm so proud of her. Actually, I have three clients that just graduated. Wow. Well, before we get to, because I don't want to wait till the end, like to while we're in this, to tell people where they can reach out to you and and, and find uh, help if they want it or work with you. Absolutely. Um, You can see me at the Harland Highway. Hey, here we go. Um, Just come on over (laughs) here and sit down with us. We'll get you through it. Yeah. No, I mean, um, thank you to all the listeners, by the way, and and for um, your support. You can find me at official Brenda Z on Instagram and my website 
Brenda Sarai Zuniga.com. But on my Instagram, there's a link tree where you can schedule uh, consultations with me. You can, you know, mm. see more of my work. You can see more of my, my podcast, my awesome. content and things like that. Great. Well, that's good work, man. That's rewarding work when you, when you can help people. Thank you. I Thank sort you. of look at doing this podcast to a degree is there's so many elements to doing it, but one element of it is, is the joy that, that I have doing it and talking to people like you and all the guests that come on. And sometimes I'll do a solo episode, but also you get feedback from people who said they've had a horrible day or they were depressed or they were down or they just, maybe they're having a great day and you add to it by throwing some laughter on it. And that's, yeah. that's really a rewarding sort of, um, you know, thing that comes from doing all this so You're i love a healer. it in a way laughter yeah laughter is the best medicine so it, there's a, there is an element of healing to that yeah mm-hmm. can you imagine if that actually was how that that existed in the in the medical world like, there's new research by the way yes and there's new um because i attend a lot of conferences i just spoke at ucla um, oh wow last year and they're, they are starting to incorporate laughter and, and as a medicine as a type of, of treatment as well. Yes. So they're with mindfulness too. mindfulness. When I speak on mindfulness and I bring the neuroscience aspect to it, you know, yeah. now they're starting to listen more. But in the past, when I would bring up mindfulness to the medical community, they'd be like, oh, pff, that's woo woo. That's all. Oh, you're just going to sit there and like <sighs> mm-hmm, meditate. No, but it's like you're. As you're breathing, as you're centering yourself, you yeah. are. Okay, so what's happening in the brain? I'm about to get real. Here we go. Can I get science for a go. second? Please. Can I get, can Here I get we go. Let me fix my wig. Okay, 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 okay. Okay. Great hair. Bring it. Thank you. They're From plugs. Finland, right? Made in Finland. Norway. 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 Yeah. Not Holland. Holland. Tomorrow, Holland. Okay. Right now. Oh, so we switch it up. Yeah, I like to move my hair plugs around. Damn. Sometimes I put them on my ass if That's it gets that. cold out. Objection. Well, no, nothing wrong with a hairy ass. Well, I mean, that's hearsay. Hair say. Hair spray. Yeah. Say hair. Spray. Mm. <laughs> but wait, before you dip into the science, I just had this vision. If, if, if laughter becomes a legit medicine. Yeah. I'm picturing some guy in the hospital and the doctor walks out, goes, excuse me, Mr. Johnson. Hate to inform you, but you've got an inoperable <laughs> cancerous brain tumor. And the guy's like, Oh my God, is, is there anything you can do? And the doctor's like, well, sir, uh, knock, knock. <laughs> Who's there? Inoperable cancer's brain to me. You're going to die, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, we better be careful what we wish for. <laughs> can I hold on to the mic? Yeah, hold it with both hands. <laughs> just cradle it and just keep it away from your tracheotomy hole. <laughs> oh, there she goes. <laughs> There Can she goes. Yeah. Dynamite. Can I get canceled? <laughs> we got canceled <laughs> like 45 minutes ago. <laughs> hey, everybody. Check out my merchandise at harbling.com. Yeah, most people just slap some letters or images on a T-shirt or a hoodie. But not me. Yours truly. Guess what? I draw my own designs at harbling.com. You can see tons of my hand-drawn t-shirts uh you can either buy the original or you can buy a print and uh man oh man wear them loud and proud um i love making these designs for you guys and uh keeping it personal so check out the whole uh catalog we got hoodies we got coffee mugs we got uh t-shirts you name it it's there at harbling.com get your uh, harland original design wearable art at harbling.com today and uh thank you for your support and i'll just keep the uh the groovy images coming um can i make another comment too before you dip into the science yes of course because i i want to go back real quick to how we were talking about alcohol kills brain cells Uh uh-huh and I've, I've known that since I was a kid. They taught us that in high school and right. like in grade 10 health where they're trying to discourage kids from drinking kills brain cells. But then you look at like a raving alcoholic like Hemingway, mm-hmm. 
let's say, who was, he was a known, just a lush, a, a huge alcoholic. And you got to ask yourself, how many brain cells do we have? If a guy like that is like just getting hammersmithed every day, going out and fishing for marlin, like completely plastered, and then he comes back and sits down and writes, you know, the old man in the sea and, uh, you know, all his, what do you write, war and peace or all his, uh, all his books, the flowers in the attic, not his, but you don't know that. <laughs> but it makes you wonder, like, like, if it really kills your brain cells, like, isn't it sort of like, you know, when you turn over one of those sand timer things? Mm -hmm. Like, aren't, don't, shouldn't you, like, because most people drink. Shouldn't we all be just like, raving dummies by now like how many brain cells are in there trillions great question i will research that when i get off this podcast right because yeah. even even the most severe alcoholics like some of them can be very high functioning and you know oh, i yeah. think i think when you meet people that maybe are really severe like homeless people in the street they might have mental health issues and they might have thrown in crack and opioids and oxycontin yeah. so so those are people that I don't kind of put in that category. They're kind of like off the chart wild cards. Mm -hmm. But just a traditional like drinker. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, a lot of rock stars, a lot of artists, a mm -hmm. lot of like Jackson Pollock was a big alcoholic. Like so many mm -hmm. high achievers. Yeah. How do they not go from being high achievers to, I mean, I'm sure their health diminishes, but mm -hmm. how is it that their brains don't hit a point where, okay, buddy, you've just drank like, 300 gallons of vodka in your life mm -hmm. you just diminished over half your brain cells how are they st i don't know i guess i wonder if brain cells regenerate or something i don't know i don't know that science neither do they <laughs> well i'll i will say this i do know some high functioning you know alkies yeah as well, yeah people who are very successful and who drink a lot and it's their way of soothing but they're they're not they're not positively soothing and it is affecting them it yeah. is affecting them whether yeah. they want to admit it or not just oh, yeah. because somebody is showing up on paper or showing up to <laughs> clock in yeah. doesn't mean that internally they are successful or that they're feeling good internally you know yeah, people, that's true we, here's the thing people will go through great lengths to Pretend like they're okay. Mask. People will go to the greatest of lengths to mask, yeah, and to make to make everybody else believe that they're okay and they're able to function and they're able to do things. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, they are, you know, killing themselves on the inside. Yeah, and and they're deteriorating on the inside. So yeah, it's like waves on the shore. It's just slowly eroding the it's shoreline. It's kind of like you know? when somebody says that a dolphin is stupid because they can't do taxes. <laughs> I'm never gonna. I'm never gonna let that go. That's what she said. Ever. Yeah. yeah. Now, yeah. Uh, but let's abandon the science for a minute. Mm -hmm. All this stuff. By the way, great work. Great. So get in touch if you want to work with you. Thank you. And but the other element, which is you know, I love it when beauty and brains collide. And you were because I haven't met a lot of people who have ever been in a legit beauty pageant oh yeah you, you were like weren't you miss like uh what, what what city or town were you you were in like a legit beauty pageant a few of them right mm -hmm. i was um miss toluca lake in 2018 nice toluca lake usa and then i was miss burbank in 2019 wow and i uh became a semi-finalist at miss california usa wow two two times mm -hmm. what's that like like being in that environment because we just see the beautiful women parading out. They're yeah. smiling. They're, it's almost like you said, they're masking what's backstage. I remember at one point in my career, I did this show called Star Search back okay. in the 80s with yeah. Ed McMahon. And it was, yeah. it was kind of the original American Idol, but it was for singers, comedians, models, dancers. Everyone would come. It was like America's Got Talent, but everyone would come out and, and compete. And I went on as a comedian... Yeah. thinking, oh my God, this is going to be so fun and I'm doing comedy and I'm laughing and there's going to be all the other. And backstage, it was so competitive. A lot of the, the um, categories were for kids, like kid dancers, kid singers. 
and the parents were backstage because they just lumped all the talent together. You get out there and you sing, and this is for your, <laughs> oh this is God. for your future, and this is for your, and that kid over there, you can be like. And I was just like mortified because I went in, hey, I'm doing some jokes on television, and and so my question to you is, yeah, women can be catty, women can be competitive. Mm-hmm. Was it like that backstage at a at a beauty pageant, or was everyone sort of friendly, and were they? Fake friendly or what, what was it? You tell me. Yeah, great question. Another great one. Question. That's two. <laughs> okay, for those of you in podcast land, Joe Rogan, Theo Vaughn, <laughs> Bill Burr, all you guys with your big fancy podcast, I just asked two really great questions in the span of 50 minutes. So uh, this was for you. I didn't know that's where he was going to go. So that's why I did this. And then he did that. I think you're so having I a flashback to Denny's. It, you're like, your scrambled eggs, sir? This was a trauma response right here. These this are your was... trauma scrambled eggs? This is my <laughs> full moon over therapy? <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> oh, see, Dynamite. there's another one. Dynamite. Dynamite. All right, oh. so tell me about the backstage hijinks and, and what yeah. it was like. No, it was... It was so much fun. I actually, oh, good. Now, I now am the uh, the first ever um, mindfulness coach. I'm the first ever mindfulness coach for the Miss California USA organization. Wow. Um, and I'm the first official sponsor like ever. So, what? you know, and I, I loved it. I had so much fun. Everybody is really kind backstage. They were. They were. They, really? It's a lot of very beautiful, internally beautiful, empowered girls that, Okay, who that's good to hear. Truly, like, just want to make this world a better place, and I really love that. And I wouldn't back anything that I yeah didn't believe or was passionate about. And so, I mean, these these young women are incredible. Oh, so, that's really good to hear. But th- there yeah. wasn't like one or two that were just like you could see them like talking about the other girls or in- trying to intimidate you. Like, you're not gonna get you're gonna go out in those shoes. Like, <laughs> there was none of that. I find it hard to believe in something that's so competitive that there was no kind of, you know, kind of animosity I mean, or, or like kind of nerve rattling type of stuff. I personally yeah. didn't experience Oh, good. That, you know? That's good to hear. I personally didn't, but I'm, I mean, in a competitive environment, like you were saying, I yeah. can't imagine that at the higher levels, like there may be something happening, yeah. but I'm just speaking of personal experience. Yeah. Like I, I didn't experience any of that. Great. But, oh my God, Here fun we go. fact, you, when you brought up pageants, yeah, that's how we met. But I don't know if you remember the first time. Oh yeah, I was, um, I was Miss uh, Eagle Rock. No, I was Miss Palmdale that oh, year. you were. Is that the one we met at? I'm, I could have sworn it was City of Industry. Oh no, I know, I was Miss Bakersfield. Oh. Yeah, I lost to a truck driver. Yeah, I know the guy in driving a shell truck. Damn it, I was so close. He had hairier legs we're and gonna, bigger man we're tits. Gonna to, we're gonna have to cut that out. Well, speaking we, of hairy we legs, speaking of hairy legs, yes, I have hairy legs. Used to for a really long oh, time. Oh, don't ruin up, it! Don't ruin up. it! Don't ruin it! You don't please don't. <laughs> that's what we're gonna cut out. I'm gonna save your. No, you did. You had big hairy legs when I was a child. But like, yes, I looked like Bigfoot sister when I was in middle school. Wait, how old are we talking? I was maybe like twelve. I'm gonna newsflash. Not even boys have hair on their legs Listen, at twelve. I'm Mexican. You're a Mexican boy. I looked like a. You know, I said later I wanted to roll up in your uh, hair <laughs> on the on the carpet and. I think I'm gonna. Can I pull that one back a little? No. Okay. Well, no. Guess we'll be no, camping on Brokeback Mountain then. Okay. Wait. So wait. Wait. Fast forward. Wait. Yeah. Ah. Uh, okay. Listen. <laughs> I'm listening. I got. I got hearing apparatuses <laughs> on. I'm extra listening. I'm trying to remember. Okay. Oh, you when said you had hairy listening. boy legs. Okay, but we'll we'll go back to that. <laughs> oh we'll God, go back do we to have to? What was, what's your butt crack when, look like? God. When? <laughs> God. Okay. Anywho. I yeah, like no. A, no. Tell me about, okay. you had the hairy boy legs okay. and you were 12. I looked like a Wolverine Dora the Explorer. <laughs> I'm trying to be vulnerable right now. Wow, you are. Do you want to cry? Let it out. Weep a little. 
You were Wolverine the Explorer. <laughs> oh, little Wolverine the Explorer with a little parrot on your shoulder and your knife fingers. Oh. Yeah. It was really awful. I had the, the hairiest legs. Oh, God. Did you ever rub them together at night and make cricket noises? Yeah, I would make fires. You made fires out in the woods by rubbing your hairy boy legs together? <laughs> mm-hmm. oh. And then, fun fact, fun serious fact, fun real fact, as an act of rebellion, I would shave like a little airport landing strip on my leg. You had a Brazilian on, on your my leg. On your leg. It's like no, it wasn't a full Brazilian because then that'd be my whole legs would be shaved. Oh. But like no, it was like a little landing hairless, strip, little hairless patch. Oh, so it was a reverse landing strip. Yeah, to like piss off my mom. Your mom got mad because there was a bald patch on your leg. Yeah, because she wouldn't let me shave my legs. Why? She w- She always wanted a boy. Oh, your mother wow. wished she'd had a boy. So now we're uncovering some trauma on this podcast, aren't we? Yeah, should I be charging you? I think so. Yeah. She always wanted a boy. She always wanted a hairy boy. <laughs> and then you shaved part of it off and you faced her wrath. What'd you ever do with your mustache? <laughs> oh, well, oh. Goodbye, mother. <laughs> Goodbye, mother. Your little maybe, boy must go out into the world. Maybe my name should be Brendan. Yeah. Yeah. Or Larry. Never Larry. Come on. Touchy little boy, aren't you? <laughs> That's what the priest I'm said. I'm not going to get canceled. <laughs> Too late. No. Wow. So, so, so um, how hairy are we talking? Like, like, like full on, like you could see the hair? Or was it that young kid, like sort of half invisible, ciliated hair? Okay. So picture Bigfoot. Yeah. His sister. Wow. Yeah. So Prada foot. What? Prada foot? Prada foot? Don't women like the Prada footwear? <laughs> <laughs> what would a female Bigfoot be wearing? Prada with the red heels? If you mean Louboutin heels with no the red heels. No thanks, I'd do it without it. Didn't you? Okay. It was bad. I would I wow. would wear shorts and it, oh, come it, it on. was so bad. I'm not kidding. I feel like that's where I developed my personality. I had to to survive. I was not pretty. I was not attractive. Did the kids did the did the boys and the other girls like point out that you had hairy legs? Yeah, all the time. My first boyfriend, oh. I was 12 years old and I'm pretty sure that the only reason why he said yes you know, after me asking him, would you be my boyfriend? Like, yeah. I'm pretty sure he was like, ah, don't eat me. And that's the only wow. reason why he said yes. Or maybe he was gay. Thought you were a boy. Oof. Now we're uncovering even more trauma. Yeah. Keep it coming, girl. I'm here for you. I have my own methods, too. Did you also study over 12 years? Yeah. 15. 15? Yeah. With a priest. Wow. Well... If I count my high school experience, I, um, I'm i not going to... You know what? I was about to age myself, and now I didn't. I'm 21 years old. Somebody's masking. <laughs> I know it hurts. <laughs> Let it out, kid. I wish I was a boy now. You are. Look in your underpants right now. It's there. I am not going to be canceled, Harley. I take all of that back right now. <laughs> Oh my gosh! <coughs> so that's what you don't get wanted. canceled for having hairy boy legs. That's what my mom wanted this whole time. She a wanted boy. a boy. Yeah, that's why she wouldn't let me shave my legs. Are you and your mom on good terms? Yeah, we're on great terms. We're on. We yeah. got off on the right foot. Yeah, well, maybe uh, one day you grow the hair back and take her out and play soccer. We, um, we could get off on the left foot too, but we got off on the right foot. That's what she said. So that's. That I hop. Denny's. That makes sense why I would go to Denny's. That makes sense why yeah. I rejected IHOP for yeah. so long. Yeah. Oh my God. Good morning. I'm your hairy boy. Can I seat you? Wow. Yeah. It all makes sense, Harland. Yeah. That's I why was, you're here. 
That's you, why I'm here doing what I do. You thought you were here to help heal me, and I turned the tables around on you like I do with all my guests. They all leave here feeling fuller, more stabilized, as do my viewers, all seven of them. Tanya Teeth Tunker Tunk, little Eskimo girl, and Billy Blastoff Lips over there in the corner. And there he is. Shane Shamwow Teeth. Wow, Shamwow. Yeah, he can really absorb his own saliva. Wow. Yeah. Didn't they have dolphins in that Shamwow commercial? They did, but they dried up. Yikes. Yeah. yeah. That's awful. Um, can we cut to, because this is the big beauty pageant thing. <laughs> what is it when the women, like, <clears throat> develop Parkinson's disease when they win? Like, it... <laughs> I mean, if you, the, it's always like, ah, like the fingers are gone. They're, the, right away, it's like, you Listen. win, you're getting Parkinson's. They're like, ah, <laughs> oh, the fingers are trembling, their head's going, ah. Listen, we what? are under a lot of pressure up there. Okay, so I pageantry know, but- is so much more than just standing up on stage and waving, but there's techniques. There's walking techniques. There's right. posing techniques. There's smiling techniques. There's... You can't touch your hair. You have to stand this way. You have to do this. You gotta wow. like. You have to, and then the way you speak, you the the way you conduct. It's it's a performance. It really it's a very technical. Do us a favor as as a little behind the curtain scene. Okay. Go from just a normal face, no teeth, lips closed, mm-hmm. into a full on. I'll go three, two, one, and flash the beauty pageant smile as you've developed it. Is that, is that cool? <laughs> I, sure. So we can see what that looks like? I don't know what that looks like. Oh, I thought you said you, you had it all, like, planned out. Oh, yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. I have amnesia. Miss Amnesia <clears throat> 2024, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. So go with closed lips, and I'll okay. go three, two, one, and then mm-hmm. you flash your okay. beauty queen smile. Ready? Okay. I'll let you fix your hair. You all set? Mm-hmm. I got to then, like, wap Okay, okay, don't give it away yet. Ready? Okay. Here we go. Three, two, one. Just kidding. We don't wave. We don't wave. We can't do this. Stunning. We can't wave this. You, do, you did it. We can't wave. It's beautiful, though. Yeah. I, who saw the wave? Uh, we everyone. were blinded by your, your beautiful all, teeth. All, that... of, all of the incredible. Samantha Tonka Tonk oh. from Louisville. Saw Louisville, it. yeah. Shane Shamwell saw it. Oh, Shane Shamwell. No saliva. Sorry, Shane. Yeah. I, that line, I, I messed all of that up. I'm sorry. I just keep thinking about how my name should have been Brandon. Yeah. little. Well, shouldn't it be? You said little Mexican boy. Shouldn't you have sort of a more of a Latino name? My name should have been Brandon. Little Harry Brandon. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so pageantry. Um, yeah. As I was saying... Um, that scream. It's very technical. It's very technical. Yeah. And why do why do we shake when when we? Yeah. What is what is that like? Stage? Like why can't they, why do all of them do it? Why can't you just go? Ah, I won. What the? <laughs> th- <laughs> you know, like we because we prepped a lot for that moment. So that's just like a release. Yeah. And inter- but the, yeah. Okay. That's a release. We are so ecstatic because it took a lot to okay. get Okay. But you don't see people like at that the Olympics. Means, you don't see well, people at the Oscars. They, it's a huge. They, they're not yeah, like. I just, I just won the high jump. Ah, you know, I just got an Oscar for Field of Dreams. Ah, oh really? Like, really? You've never seen anyone at the Oscars be like, oh my god, never. No, I'm talking up. about the traditional. Ah. Oh, like the hands up, like ah. Yeah. Well, there's nothing really else we can do if they're putting the crown on our head and then we're just standing there waiting. It's just a release. I it's actually like, stole it. Well, I, I did a scene. I did a movie called Rocket Man, and one of the greatest films ever. Thank you so much. Oh yeah. And we did a scene where it gets announced who the three astronauts are who are going to go to Mars. We're at, a, we're at a press conference, and I'm sitting there. I'm one of the technicians, and I, I don't think I'm going because you get all these qualified guys. And so the scene was they announced the first two names, and then the third name they announced me, yeah. and and I'm going to Mars. And in the script they had it. My character's name was Fred. When Fred finds out that he's been picked as the final member of the first team to ever go to Mars, he faints. And I said to the director, I said, what is funny about fainting? That, that was probably done in the first 
five maybe first comedies ever made by Charlie Chaplin and Buster Keaton. Yeah. Fainting was probably, to see a grown man faint was probably hilarious. Yeah. We're in the 90s now, okay? Yeah. What, what? This is the punchline, fainting? This guy's about to be the first guy to go to another planet. Yeah. And he faints. And I said, I said let me have one take where I'm going to do the beauty queen scream. When he mm. find, when you announce his name, and he goes, oh, come on. I said, I said trust me, give me one take. And he, he was sort of like, and I told the sound guy, I said, you know, the guy with the boom mic? I said, stand back. I am going to scream like I just got about to be hit by a subway. Yeah. And so the director gave me one take, and they announced me, and our final member to go to Mars, astronaut Fred Randall. And I just went, ah! <laughs> I screamed as loud as I, and I did, I, I borrowed it from that, and it became a trailer moment. It became one of the funniest moments in the whole movie. Yeah. Like, it was like, so I, I always have kind of a connection to the beauty queen scream. That is so cool. Yeah, Thanks while. for sharing that. You're welcome. That'll be $40, please. <laughs> That's such a cool tidbit. I didn't know that. Tidbit. You don't hear that anymore. Tidbit. I hear it sometimes down at the circumcision center, but I like oh. that word, tidbit. Oh, yeah. You yeah. hear that a lot. We'll throw down it there. around down there, tidbit. No, like a lot. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Maybe too much. Mm. You got any tidbits today? Sure. We have a mountain of them, you yeah. know? Yeah. You got a whole bucket <clears throat> of tidbits. Yeah, buckets. <laughs> <laughs> Um, are we allowed to go down the road? Because, you know, beautiful girl, beautiful guy, talking about beauty, pageants, men, women. Mm -hmm. I do this thing. Mm -hmm. And it can be as blue or as clean as you want it to be. Okay. We pull out the love thing. <gasps> what? And what we do is we reach in there. There's words. We each get a word, and then we combine the word to assist our viewers, and it becomes a new lovemaking technique, <laughs> and we describe what the, how the technique works. So I'll go. We'll eat, both reach in and grab a word. Okay. Don't look. Okay. So I've got a word. Now you go into the love box okay. and pull out a word. Let me put my peepers on. I'm not trying to cheat. Yeah, don't cheat. Okay. okay, I got my word. Okay. You have your word? I do. Okay, read your word out loud. It seems to be a new word we are developing in the English vocabulary, it, and it is a caterpillar. Caterpillar. No, no, not caterpillar. Oh, it was misspelled? Caterpillar. Ca Mr. Caterpillar. <laughs> caterpillar. So it's caterpillar. Well, we'll Somebody, that. probably one of my employees who works here at the Harland Highway, misspelled it. It wasn't me. It was me. It was one of them. It was one of them. One of my one of many workers who I are working behind the scenes, <laughs> but in the office upstairs on the fourth, fifth, and sixth floors. One of those guys or girls probably misspelled it, but it wasn't me. It's okay. It happens. Yeah. You them. better not do anything to them. It I'll, happens. It's well, not a big have deal. A, we'll have a meeting. We'll have a meeting. No, it's not a big deal. I'm not going to fire anyone, but I'm going to reprimand. No. I mean, who doesn't know how to spell caterpillar? No, no, no. That was okay. You know what? Then I take it back. It says caterpillar. It's okay. I'm, I, you know, don't, don't. Okay. Don't get them Just, in trouble. No, it's okay. I didn't get them in trouble. I think you did. I did. Now I feel bad. <clears throat> Somebody's going to lose their job so beauty boy, Mexican beauty queen boy can live. <laughs> now, so, so my word is potato. Cool. So the new sex act is called the potato caterpillar. Okay. And how it works is, <clears throat> as you know, a potato has many eyes on it. And a caterpillar has many legs. So what you do, the potato caterpillar is a technique where you cover the eyes okay, and you spread the legs. I got to. Oh, what? For a second. Cut. Yeah. For a second. Yeah. Cut. Yeah. Only because this has to be cut. Eyes that are going to be watching. Spreading caterpillar legs. I'm so done. <clears throat> <laughs> Um, <clears throat> potato. Wow. Hola, soy Dora. Can you say that again as a Mexican boy? Hola, soy Dora. That. Are you fluent in Spanish? 
I am. Por supuesto que sí, el volcán de Parangaracutrimícaro. Además que que la capota en tu minito la patita. Tú sabes, potato y carapilar. La pita de robar ya hay hapa que te matan. ¿Qué me llamaste? Que la pila matita mata a matiz y para partos. El volcán de Parangaracutrimícaro se dice Parangaracutrimícaro, que lo cual es Parangaracutrimícaro, será un gran... Oh, mi toco el día, me enseñan buena chita. Me chico, no, ni que me la diga, te pido que yo te pido ban. Ok. I mean, I agree. I agree. I, that was a... Are we shaking? No, I'm handing you a moons over my hammy on oh. my hand. Yes, we're shaking. What do you oh. think? Wait, we're shaking. Okay. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> That's how you shake. <laughs> You're like, hey, let's shake on that. <laughs> All right, we got one more thing, and this one's totally oh. PG. This is our final segment. By the way, what a pleasure having you here. How fun. <laughs> You're How amazing, fun. Heart. Thank you You're for amazing. having me. So this is pure PG. This is We do this with every guest. It's called Words from a Wooden Shoe. Okay. This is an authentic Dutch clog, same place I got my hair plugs. Insider words. You reach in, pull out a word, and see if something, that word, somewhere in your journey in life, uh, an experience, a moment, a memory is spurred or spawned by that word. And you can share it with our, our seven or eight viewers. Maybe nine have tuned in by now because okay, you're so, quite beautiful. So, so, so low-key, I just got really excited when you brought out the shoe. Yeah. And so I was like, ah! and so my ADHD brain completely mm. like. Here we go. Kind of zoned out. Okay. And I was like, oh man, what does he want me to do now? So I need to like. Oh, you, you, know you didn't I mean? hear a word I said. I mean, I heard you, but I didn't. You didn't, you didn't like, absorb it. I, yeah, like, I heard you say it. it was like, I was talking, but you all you heard is asparagus soup, <laughs> yeah. nightcrawler, tomato. I got you. So, basically, <laughs> okay. you look at the word yeah. and see if it uh, spawns a story from your, your journey in life, a memory, uh, 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 an event, a friend, something. So, yeah. what's, what's the word? I love it. It says embarrassed by dad. Oh, okay. Here we go. <laughs> this should lead to something good. Oh, man. Embarrassed by dad. I mean, dad. what what kid hasn't been embarrassed by their father <laughs> at some point? And you as a little Mexican boy, there's got to be a story somewhere. I mean. <laughs> embarrassed by dad. Okay. Yeah. Um, Are you close with your dad? I love my dad. Oh. Um, yeah. No, good, good. I, I'm trying to see... Okay, maybe it was okay. What's and this could be from your whole life, like when you were a little kid. It could be when you're a teenager. It could be, you know, any yeah. any stage in your life. Not like today. It could yeah. be any time. The fir- I mean, the what keeps what's in my. Sorry, did I hit trigger your ADHD again? I distracted you. So what we're doing is we pull the word out of a shoe, and then you're gonna read your word. I'm now frozen. Yeah. By the way, my favorite Disney movie. Mm. God, I love watching it again. Well, it's a two-hour movie. If you could, <laughs> okay, well. Okay. Um, embarrassed by your embarrassed dad. By dad. It's so got to be something. Because I keep thinking about middle school, and my okay, my, my subconscious mind is mm-hmm. very active right now with middle school memories. Um, True story. Do you do you ever remember having those like lunch dances or those after school dances? They were for like a dollar. No. No. Okay. That for was, a dollar. Yeah, and you'd go and you'd dance and like I just remember vividly Usher playing like yeah 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 yeah, yeah. and then like all these like little sixth graders seventh graders just like pretending like they know how to dance yeah. and then everyone shining a light on them like stop oh. touching you know oh the teachers were like monitoring the dance yeah so they didn't want, want to allow any heavy petting or anything <laughs> no like you yeah just, they was... just turn the light on and some guy's rubbing your hairy legs <laughs> <laughs> your dad's like go home go home right now and shave <laughs> like this isn't dancing this is a kink okay this is no so what happened what happened so you're at the thing i remember my phone died and my dad i I remember it i texted him during lunch going hey dad there's gonna be a a dance after school so i'm gonna be about 10 minutes late to get to the front to where he picked me up yeah yeah yeah. the front and he goes no brenda i have to get back to work and i'm like whatever he can wait and so i'm at this dance and i'm then my phone died. And I was like, oh no. 
I was like, what time is it? Oh, well, Usher's playing. So like, I'm just dancing. And I remember my girlfriend came up to me and she goes, dude, I think I just saw your dad screaming at the teachers outside. I'm like, what? Oh, no. And so I ran outside and my dad was like, you are in so much trouble. Get over here. And he like grabbed me and then he was like, I'm late for work. I was, I made him wait like 20, 30 minutes without me. And this was in front of all the other kids. And he dragged you out of there. Who were then like waiting, dying to get inside the dance because there would be lines to get inside the dance. Oh, wow. And you're getting dragged out. Yeah. Wow. And you know, you know, the dad, when that happens, like that, that they see you on the other side of the gym and they walk like the Terminator. They're like, dun, <laughs> yeah. dun, dun, dun. where's yeah. my, where's my hairy little boy? <laughs> <laughs> right. Is that That's you. what he thought too? Yeah. yeah. All he wanted was a daughter and he got a greasy, hairy little freak. A boy. That's probably why he dragged you out of there. No son of mine's going to dance around in his hooter shorts and his Sasquatch legs. So my dad wanted a girl. Yeah, and your mom, my mom wanted, wanted a boy. A boy. <sighs> oh, my God, Arland. I think you're probably the ultimate candidate for becoming trans. We cannot Not put, that put that on the there. podcast. We cannot. We will get canceled. I will get canceled, canceled immediately. Canceled so fast. You know you were canceled like an hour ago, right? <laughs> no. We both were. So let's go back to yeah. my mom wanted, my dad wanted a, a, a girl. A girl, yeah. My mom wanted a boy. Okay, yeah. so we're going to do that and we're not going to, okay, say those words. Okay. Yeah. I don't, okay. <clears throat> so, so my mom wanted a boy. <laughs> Maybe a couple of them. And my dad wanted a girl. Yeah. Maybe a couple of them. You are, well. I'm a woman. Well. Uh, I'm a woman. Who knows what you are, really? I'm a woman. You look a lot like a dolphin with a wig to me. (laughs) That didn't sound like a dolphin at all. No, that that sounded like a child getting run over by a stroller (laughs) at Home Depot. Or Disneyland. Yeah. Where they shouldn't belong. Yeah. Children shouldn't belong no, at Disneyland. No, no, they shouldn't. That is yeah. that is a strictly adult yeah. theme park. It's a rave. That's for us. Yeah, that's and for... And our inner children. Yeah. That's it. That's right. That's for... We are children. Yeah. We, no, seriously. Let's get philosophical for okay, a second. Okay, okay. We are we children. We are all children. Yes. In adult, quote-unquote, bodies... Okay. ...that get backache if you sit for too long or stand for too long. Okay. Right? But we are all children. Okay. We deserve Disneyland. We deserve corn. Because we are children of the corn. Wait. Mm. Hold on. Mm. Ah! (laughs) (laughs) All right. Plug away. Tell people where they can see you, (laughs) where they can see you do stand-up, where they can uh, connect with you if they want to, uh, you know, get involved with your your wonderful services you provide. Let them them hear it. Aw, thank you, Harlan. Yeah, no, please. Thank you to everyone who listened. Y'all are amazing. Yeah, Um, they're great. All seven of them. (laughs) Hey, Shane Shamwow is incredible. I'm a huge fan. Oh, that guy's so dry, you could almost build a sandbox on his tube of Vagisil. (laughs) Hey, you know, Cut as long that as, part out. As long as you don't get them near dolphins, it's all, it's yeah, okay. Yeah. You know? So I know y'all just saw me get hella silly on the Harlem podcast, but I can also get very serious and philosophical. Um, and that's where you can find me also at official Brenda Z on Instagram. Um, you can also reach out to me there. Again, you have my link tree. You have... Um, where you can find me performing. I will upload everything on official Brenda Z. Nice. My website, Brenda Sarai Zuniga. You can find more info there as well. Um, We are all in this together from the bottom of my heart. Much love, and I really appreciate you having me. Thank you. I love it. Love having you. Yeah, thank you. Would you close out, because I have seven viewers, but three of them are Latino. Oh. If you could say much love, thanks for having me. Just that last part in Spanish. Mucho gusto. No, that, wait, that's, uh, that's. Um, that was Portuguese. That, no, that was Spanish. Well, but that was not a where different I come from. Type of, 
That was Denny's Portuguese. If you could just tell the three Latino viewers. Mucho gusto en conocer a todos. And in English, that's mushrooms and, and, that actually, and toast. That, that, oh. means th- that means so great meeting all of you. Is that what you... All three of them? All three of them. Los quiero mucho. I love you all. Harland is the best. Harland is lo peor que he visto en toda mi vida. Y no sé por qué... Just kidding. A little angry that at was, the end. I love that. That said that you're the best. I am the best. And on that note, ladies and gentlemen... Thank you for being here. What a delight. Thank you so much. Folks, this has been the Holland Highway Podcast. (laughs) And until next time, (laughs) get fixed and chicken chow mein, baby. Bye, everybody. And don't hit any hairy little boys on the drive home. (laughs) Let it out. Let it out. Let it out, Billy. That's it. Cry it out, little boy.